Good day and salutations, my friends. So happy to have you here and see all of your beautiful faces. Now, as you can see on your screen right now, I currently have 875 subs, which means we are closing in on the grand 1000 mark that everyone wants to hit to hit that YouTube partner. So if you haven't yet, help me get there by subscribing and maybe liking this video if it helps you out. But let's get into why you're actually here. And that is because you wanna figure out how to get your current live subscriber count number onto your YouTube live stream. Obviously this number is nice to have because, well, you wanna show people the progress you're making and maybe encourage people to help you get to your next goal. So if you've been wondering how to put this on your live stream, which I have been requested to make this video in the past, so here I am making it now, let me go ahead and show you exactly how to do that. And I wanna remind you guys, I do personally use Streamlabs OBS. However, if you're using OBS Studio, which I know a lot of people do, the programs are very, very similar. So you can probably follow along just fine. However, if you can't, I try to familiarize myself with each program so you can go ahead and ask me in the comments down below if you're confused on a certain step. But for the most part, this process is pretty simple. So let's just dive in. I can show you guys how to get this number on your live stream today. So starting off, as you guys can see, we are on socialblade.com. And if you go there, you can type in any username in the world that has a YouTube account and find their channel and their current live subscriber count. So I'll go ahead and type in yours. You can find it pretty easily. And then you can see where you're currently at. However, you don't need this website. This is just the website that the plugin uses to pull the information from. But if there's any other YouTuber out there that you're very curious about their channel, their analytics, because it has a lot more than just subscriber count, then you can go ahead and check out this website and type in anyone that you wish. But the first thing we're going to do is we're going to open up a new tab. And just so everyone knows, you need to have Google Chrome downloaded onto your computer because Chrome extensions are what we are using and it's the only thing that's going to work for this process. So make sure you open up the homepage for Google on Google Chrome and then go up to the top right here where these three dots are, click on it, and then you're going to be going to settings. Once you're in settings, you'll see a tab at the bottom here that says extensions. Go ahead and click on that. And as you can see, I have Social Blade already a part of my extensions. So I won't necessarily be downloading it. However, I'll show you exactly how you do so, but we'll be coming back to this page in a moment. But for now, after you're in extensions, you're going to be clicking on these three dashes right here on the left-hand upper corner side, going down to open Chrome Web Store, then ask you to search the store for anything you want. So we'll type in Social Blade. Enter and you'll see it right here at the very top, Social Blade. There is one right here that says the unofficial Social Blade. That is not the one you want. The one you want is up here like I showed you. And as you can see, it says I already have it added. I'll click on it anyways. And in here, it says remove from Chrome for me. Like I said, it's already downloaded. So for you, it'll probably say add to Chrome or something of that nature. So I'll go ahead and add it, download it, whatever it has you do. And then once that's done, you can go back to your extension page and then if it doesn't show up, you can probably refresh and it'll show up right here. And what you need to make sure is that this blue dash is blue. If it's off, it'll look grayed out just like that. And it means that your extension is not going to work. So just make sure that, that looks like it's blue and ticked over to the right. And once you have that confirmed, you're going to be going now to your YouTube studio. So here I am in my YouTube studio. And what we're looking for is along this list on the left-hand side, all the way down right under audio library, and you'll see it says live subscriber count. If you do not see it there, then it probably means that either you didn't download the extension properly, or if the extension does show up in your extensions tab, then if it is grayed out like so, going back, if I refresh this, you will see that no longer under audio library does the live subscriber count show. So just make sure, like I said before, this is blue. It is ticked over to the right. Go back to your studio, refresh, and there it is. And once you see it there, you can go ahead and click on it. And boom, you now have your live subscriber count. It looks just like the one we saw on socialblade.com. And as you can see, it says powered by socialblade.com. So obviously that makes sense. And from here, we're going to be grabbing this URL at the top of the page. So after you've clicked on the subscriber count, obviously it takes you to this page. You're going to go ahead and copy that URL, just like I said. And from here, we're going to be going into Streamlabs OBS or OBS Studio. So the first thing you're gonna wanna do once you've come into Streamlabs OBS is add a new source. 
Now the source you want to add is not a browser source, which you might think would be the obvious option. However, every time you want to add a browser source and use this URL, once you've completed it and click done, it asks you to sign into Google. It doesn't actually show what you're looking for. It just doesn't work. So the option that we are looking for is window capture. So basically we want to capture the window that we already have open that being the live subscriber count within YouTube Studio. You're gonna go ahead and click add source. And as you can see, you already had one added in there, but we'll add a new one anyway. And we'll call it YouTube sub count 2.0 since this is the second one I'm doing. And once you're in here, you'll see in window, you'll want to select the window that you want to capture. And of course you should still have the live subscriber count window open, probably behind your Streamlabs OBS or maybe on another monitor if you have multiple monitors. So if you still have that window open, then there should be the option there for you to click. If you don't have that option, it probably means that you don't have that window open. So go ahead and open it now and then click on this option right here. And then I like to uncheck capture cursor. So if I ever have to go to it during stream for whatever reason, it's not capturing my mouse. And from that point, we're going to be clicking done. And boom, there you go. You have your live subscriber count pasted right over your gameplay. Obviously we're not done there because this is just an entire web browser that will be posted over your gameplay and it looks pretty much terrible. So from here, we want to figure out how we can get that number 875 to only show up and the rest of this web page to be gone. So what we need to do is we need to go back to the YouTube studio and in here, as you can see, I have dark mode enabled in my web browser. Yours might be white. And if so, your process will actually be a little bit simpler than mine is. But whether you have dark mode on or not, the process is still the same. At this point, we're going to be clicking on streamer mode. And side note, if you want to ensure that this is being captured, this yellow border around my browser right now means that this is what's being captured at the moment. So we're going to be going to streamer mode, like I said, clicking on it and the whole entire thing turns green, which is exactly what we want. So from here, we're going back to Streamlabs OBS. Going back up to our source that says YouTube sub count or whatever you chose to name it. We're going to double click on that. We're going to right click on it and go to filters. And in filters, we're going to click the plus button, go into your options, and we're going to click color key. Once you click color key, go ahead and press done. And automatically, this acts as a green screen and takes away all the green that was on the web page. So you're left with this 875, if you click done, obviously if you move it around, you see that up at the top, we still have the borders of the web page, and we also still have the powered by socialblade.com. We can get rid of that pretty easily. If you go ahead and hold alt on your keyboard, click on the top right here, drag down, it crops your image. So if you do that again from the bottom, drag up, it crops out that socialblade.com. If you're not holding alt, all it does is shrink the size. So control Z to undo that. Hold Alt again. We'll come up and get rid of that. We'll get rid of the sides over here and we'll get rid of the sides over here. And of course, as your number grows, then you'll want to widen this area. So if you someday hit a thousand subscribers, obviously 1000 probably wouldn't fit in there too well. So I could just hit Alt and extend it some more to give it some more breathing room to show the full number. And that's just something that you can adjust over time. However, for now, I only need three digits and here they are. I can adjust the size if I want, but if I blow it up, you'll see that there's still green around my numbers, which I don't want. So going back into the filter, if you right click on YouTube sub count, click filters where it says one, because we have one filter applied right now move this out of the way, we can adjust this to get rid of the green. And coming in here, similarity is something is basically just tightening up the amount of green around the numbers. So if we get to a point where it's pretty much gone, then we can use this smoothness tab to adjust obviously how smooth it looks around the number. So it's not jaggedy like it looks right there. So I'll put that up pretty high. But as you can see, if I put it too high, then it almost starts to make it the opacity go down and see through. You don't want that. So I want to try to find a happy medium in here, something that smooths out the numbers pretty well, but also make sure that all the green is pretty much gone and messing around with contrast. You can mess around with your brightness to make sure that opacity isn't too glaring. And from that point, 
I find that acceptable, especially when we shrink it down, it won't look as blurry and jaggedy around the numbers. So I'll click done and I'll drag that back down to size and drag it over where I want to put it. Now to this point, really the rest is kind of up to you. I can show you exactly what I've done. It's very simple. It's nothing that impressive. It's just what I want. I like simplicity. But basically from this point, obviously you can see they are white numbers. And in the example I showed you in the beginning, I had a white background with these being black numbers. So if you want to keep it simple, you like the white numbers, so you can keep it like that. The only reason that these are white numbers is because I have dark mode enabled in Google Chrome or YouTube, I forget which one, but either way, it's dark mode. And because it's dark mode, the whole entire web page obviously is dark. It's like a dark gray. So if they had black numbers showing up with the dark mode, then they wouldn't really be able to read it too well. That's why it inverts the numbers and letters and everything else to white. So if you don't have dark mode enabled, this is probably black for you, which if that's what you want, great. But if you have dark mode enabled like myself, then it will turn out white. And I can show you how to turn that to black if you want it to be black. That way you can have a white background behind it. So from this point, you'll right click again and we will add another filter to it. Add, we'll go down to the options. And from here, we're going to add a color correction. Click done. So once you've added the color correction filter, the next step's pretty simple. You come down to where it says color, click on it to let it drop down, scroll down, drag it down to black. Click on it again to close it and click done. And if you look at your numbers, they are now black, which is exactly what I wanted because the next step that I do is I add another source. I add in a color source for my background, click add, and we'll add a new one, show you what it looks like. So it says color source, I'll just add it white. You can name it whatever you want. Add source, and then of course you'll see that it is just a white box and I'll drag it so it's under my YouTube sub count. And boom, you can see the 875 clear as day, which is exactly what I wanted. Now, obviously I don't want this to be a giant white square. I want to adjust it to the shape and size that I want. So just like the technique I showed you before with cropping within Streamlabs OBS, we hold in Alt, click the top, drag it down to somewhere around there. Click the side because I don't need that much on the side and we'll put it right there. And that's my background for my live subscriber count. And to make it obvious what that number is, I always add text. Right here it says text, add, we'll add a new source, sub count, add, and then the text will read subs. For simplicity's sake, I'll just leave it as subs with the colon and then for the color, I want it to also be black. We'll put it right there, done. And by default, it puts it all the way up in the top left-hand corner up here so I couldn't really see it. I will put it in the white box here. And then of course there is some adjusting to do because I need it to be a little bit bigger. If you just double click on it, It'll bring up the options again. I typically use Google fonts. We'll go down to Monstrat. That's pretty much what I use all the time. We'll make it not black. We'll make it bold. I like to make it bigger than what I think I'll need because I can shrink it and still keep the quality of the image. If I make the font too small and try to make it bigger, then it makes the letters a little bit more blurry. So something around there is what you are going to be left with. Now yours might look a little different than mine. You may not like mine. You might want to center it more. Make some fine adjustments, obviously, to make it to your liking. Just so you guys can see, this is the one that I had put in before. That's the one that I have in there currently that I've made before this video that's always on my live stream. So by now you should be left with something that looks a little bit like this. And from this point forward, you should have pretty good knowledge as to how to creatively make it your own if you want to. There's endless options of how you can make this your own and how you can put it onto your live stream. This is just the way I chose. It's simple, like I said, it's clean and I like it. But 
that's not all. There is one more thing that I do want to mention. There is something that you need to be careful of when embedding this into Streamlabs OBS. If you go back to the web browser, as you can see, it's the only tab I have open in this web browser page. If I were to open another one, you can see that yellow border is still around this and that does not mean that it's still capturing the first tab we have open. If we go back to Streamlabs OBS, you can see now it's just a big black box and that's because we're now capturing the Google homepage within the web browser that we initially started. So when you're making your stream, you're getting everything set up for your stream. Obviously, it's just one more thing you have to set up for the YouTube live stream so everyone can see your sub count. But after you have this already set up, make sure that is the only tab showing in this web browser. Otherwise, like I just showed you, you go to browse something on your live stream on a different tab to show your viewers or whatever you're doing, you're gonna take away that sub count. It's gonna look weird. And obviously that's not something you want. So like I said, just make sure you're not adding another tab to this web browser to avoid this mistake. Another thing you need to make note of is there was a time where my subscribers during my live stream would go up. People say, hey, your subscribers and your channel says 876. But as you can see right now, it only says 875. Why is that? And that's because if you have another application full screen like this is right here my streamlabs obs this would be not full screen because obviously you can see i can move it around you can see the other page behind it so full screen being if i click it up if i put it up like that it snaps full screen now that takes priority over the website so it's not refreshing all the time it'll still show my sub count but if i get more subs and that number goes up it won't reflect in my program I don't know why this is. I don't know if it's a bug. I don't, I don't know the technical reason, but all I really do to go around that is I just make sure this is not full screen. And basically I just kind of adjust it to size. So it's just barely full screen. So it, so it gets rid of that green. So I'm not having green all over my face like you see now. So it's basically full screen, but not technically full screen as far as my computer reads it and you'll still see the yellow border around it. That doesn't really matter. And that's how you get around that. So just make sure you don't have another tab open because that will take priority within that window. And then also make sure you don't have an application full screen over your live subscriber count because it won't be updating live. The live subscriber count behind the full screen application will be updating, but it'll be paused in your Streamlabs OBS and will be updating within Streamlabs OBS, but just something to be mindful of. And there you have it. That's a pretty in-depth explanation as to how you can get your live subscriber count on your YouTube live stream starting today. There's a few things in there that you need to be mindful of, like I said, but other than that, it's a pretty simple process as to how to actually get it showing within your stream. And like I mentioned at the beginning of this video, we are close to 1,000 subscribers. So if you guys wanna help me get to my goal of my first 1,000 subscribers, then be sure to hit that subscribe button. And if you wanna tune into one of my live streams to hopefully see my sub count going up, then be sure to do so. I stream Monday through Thursday from 6.30 p.m. Eastern and on, and I sometimes stream on the weekends. So with all that being said, that's all I have for this one. I'll catch you next one.